um, yesterday, uh, the Triple C had a presser in the afternoon, uh, and uh, this, the, this, these are uh, some of uh, you know. Maybe uh, let me read uh, from. Um, you know, a, a summary of the 18th session of the Citizens National Assembly resolutions, uh, which was uh, written uh, by uh, Promise Mkwanazi, the national uh, spokesperson. And uh, in particular for this discussion, um, I, I'll read point number um, three where he says, concerned about the violation of the constitution and the continued observation of the will of the people of Zimbabwe through unlawful recalls, uh, the CNA, Citizens National Assembly, resolved that all our party members in parliament and council disengage with immediate effect pending the reinstatement of those members of parliament and council that have been recalled. So, yeah, we want to hear your thoughts on, on that. CCC's disengagement from parliament and local authority, what are your thoughts? I see we've been joined by a Duchess of Matabe. Good morning. Morning. Uh, morning to you. Uh, I think now we're being held to ransom uh, by Amas Kwapuls, a triple C. Really, I think it's it's frustrating for us, Amas voters. It's not easy to walk Ama two kilometers going to go and vote for people and eat drama yabo spills onto us, Amas voters. Look at the case of Bulawayo, who called that had, had already started on a good momentum. Now, if you are saying they are going to disengage, it's unfair on us. The people have voted the people who are the rate payers. We we need to find a solution and as well as it disadvantage us. Because Kangela, whatever the squabbles or whatever the the conspiracies would be is the new PF behind this and that. Pierce Limaza Tina as the electorate. So I think when these decisions are made, they need to think of us as to you know, you know what? I, I feel Uti, when intelligence is given to AMA party leaders, they should take it uh, with serious thought. They knew of this plot uh, of Uti or Senges or wanted to do something. If you check AMA tweets, and company, where they say meetings were held as far back as July, Uti, there is something cooking. And they ignored that. And there is a letter that was written on the 11th of September. Issue on Aleuti, any correspondence to, to, to Parliament uh, should be coming from a certain desk. And all this, they were playing right into the hands of Izanu PF. Maybe it would have been better if they hadn't even taken up all the offices because now it's derailing. Uh, 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 um, uh, programs that are already there. I mean, I as a, a person not a because I thought we had started on a good note with the call that uh, he has the confidence to and everyone was willing really to 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 start working. So now what happens? When I left in a limbo, I think they need to rethink this thing. It's, it's really frustrating. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, uh, Duchess of Matabe, for sharing with us uh, your thoughts. Uh, Brighton, over to you. Uh, you had dropped. You can go ahead. Brighton, are you there? Yeah, good morning. Good morning, Nusanta. I hope you are, you are hearing me this morning. It's quite an interesting yes, topic. Yes, you are clear. You can go ahead. Yeah, it's quite an interesting topic that we're talking about this morning. Remember, I said the Triple C at a press conference where the leader of the Triple C spoke about the issue of disengagement to say all uh, Triple C MPs in Parliament and all councillors they must disengage themselves. I think for two weeks, and then they have these demands that are they put up put up to in front of some people to say meet these demands, and then they say the dialogue and so on. It's quite interesting one that uh, is, is kind of issue of disengagement. But I was asking people uh, uh, maybe earlier on this morning around different WhatsApp groups to say. What are your thoughts around this dis disengagement? What about service delivery in our local authorities? What about bills that are going to be discussed in Parliament? Are those what are the consequences for, for this disengagement? Will we see the PF going into Parliament alone? Like yesterday, Parliament uh, moved. Uh, there was only the PF MPs in Parliament. So what are the consequences of that where Triple C MPs and Council that disengage themselves? Are you going to have any effect of this disengagement? I want to hear from the listeners this morning. Please do request the mic. I want to hear from you. Anyway, let's go to the next speaker then. Who's the next speaker? Well, let's try uh, Ghetto. Good morning, Ghetto. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, you're clear. You can go ahead. Okay, thank you. Thank you. 
Um, you know what? Um, this disengagement from parliament and local authority uh, idea or strategy, whether they call it a strategic, whatever strategy it is, but I think it's a strategic stupidity. Because the people that I feel so, so, so sorry for are those that have faith and hope and support this, uh, uh, I don't know whether it's an organization, but this this thing that they're following uh, uh, led by Chamisa. I, I think uh, let's just, let's just uh, share our views, uh, you know, without undermining, uh, you know, let's respect, uh, you know, uh, other people's, uh, you know, uh, parties or movements, uh, you know, and uh, you just state your views without uh, really um, undermining uh, them or even insulting. Okay, sorry. Okay, okay. I, 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 I take back. I, I take that back. Sorry about that. So, so what I want to say about that is that um, I would, I would rather, if I was in the in the situation, if I was in that in in, in, in the shoes of a of a of a CC supporter, I would honestly be honest with myself first to say what I am following. Is it, is it really genuine? Is it saving my interests or not? And then if once I come up with, 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 with an answer to myself, I would want to then approach these leaders that keep on telling us things that don't exist, things that are usually of, um, of, of, the, of, of uh, that don't have evidence. A things of speculation because I would want to then confront my leaders to say look give me evidence of facts give me evidence of ZANU-PF involvement because what I have right now is a guy from your own party called Shabango called, uh, what's his name again? I think it's Shabango or something all these things that are happening They've been happening because we actually even told you if from the beginning that the systems that you are using and all that these things are going to backfire. But still more, you're still coming up with a narrative to say it's Zanu PF, it's fast, Zanu PF is fast. Are you being honest, honestly speaking? Because people voted, the people voted, the people became so emotional. Some people walked, they used to go to rallies and all that, and then only at the end of it all with falsehoods without accepting that us are just wrong what we did as leaders is wrong the way we, we did the 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 the, 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 our, the our own primary elections was wrong if they are honest enough they would make sure that you know they they, they, would, they would feel pity for their people but this thing of pointing at zanu pf and fuzz i think they are followers should bring them to account to really explain to them to be honest could you, what they're doing is not right you know because this is disengagement and uh this disengagement what they're calling disengagement when for example i would like to ask maybe they're even here some of the leaders when does it start because from my understanding is already the way they were they were they were kicked out of parliament for the for the, for the next maybe two weeks or something i can't remember so when does their disengagement start? Does it start now or does it start from the time they are, they, they've been kicked out? Because see, there are words that they play with just to hoodwink their own supporters, you know, to, 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 to be emotional. I, I'm, 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 I'm very sorry about what's happening with, uh, the, with, uh, with, 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 with their supporters. But I hope one day their supporters will be able to have guts like this Shabango guy, what he has done, to approach them and say, this is not right be accountable to your own mistakes and let people move on thank you well thank you ghetto for your contribution this morning yeah uh, i'm seeing uh, from the comment section a uh, general says let the victim blaming uh, begin again i mean uh, okay this this has also been um uh, the 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 you know 
uh, the issue, some people, I think from yesterday and even uh, the day before yesterday have been saying we are blaming the victim here. I wonder what others have to say um, if they share the same, same uh, sentiments with Gerald or with Ghetto or with Duchess. I don't know. Well, let's hear from uh, the others. Good morning, KK. Morning, uh, thank you very much for uh, such a, 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 a platform. Um, and, and good morning to Brighton uh, and everybody else who's uh, on the speaker podium, as well as those who have spoken before me. Uh, good morning to everybody. Um, it's a very interesting time, uh, though not so so shocking. Uh, we did, uh, 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 well, this, this whole stance by CCC was quite predictable. I think we did discuss uh, and foresee it coming. Um, uh, the, this disengagement process. Uh, a, my take on it is that, uh, you know, I, I I did think that Chamisa did say some things that were quite, uh, uh, if he meant them, uh, the, 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 you know, it's the things that we've been looking for for quite some time, dialogue and all these things. But if, if, we, if you follow, if we follow... Um, you know, following Zimbabwe's uh, political uh, space uh, and its involvement, we see that we always use extreme tools for for that for that so-called um, uh, dialoguing. Uh, so, so this is also one scenario where we are having to reach out to a very extreme tool uh, to try and uh, induce a state of uh, dialogue or or, or, or negotiation. Um, so some people will feel that they're not being listened to. I don't know why we've created a political environment in which we don't listen to each other, uh, whether intra-party, uh, or, you know, across the, you know, different political players in Zimbabwe, you know, resulting into this, resulting in this state of polarization that we, we find ourselves in. So basically, uh, we then have to reach out to extreme tools, even ones that will uh, destroy us, uh, destroy the good that we have been building on for 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 years, just so we can get to dialogue. Uh, you look at the sanctions. I think I had an engagement with Ritendo. With Ritendo. We look at the sanctions issue. Um, it was because some people felt that the system was not listening to them and they had nothing else on their disposal to try and induce a state of dialogue. You look at the global political agreement, it, it, you know, we continuously, continuously uh, 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 have to reach these extreme tools that have so much repercussions, even for the existence of our uh, political institutions, the existence of a nation as a whole. Um, we have to introspect and say, is this the kind of people that we are, in, 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 that we don't listen to one another? So Schengen felt he wasn't being listened to. I think somebody spoke to that effect, that there were some processes that were happening within the CCC in which uh, certain quarters inside the CCC felt they were not being listened to. And um, so they felt they needed to wait for an opportune time, an opportune uh, 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 circumstance in which they could exploit, you know, a far-reaching uh, um, tool to try and induce dialogue within within the the organization. Uh, also, across the uh, the the you know the political divide, you had uh, Zanu PF also perhaps feeling that the dialoguing around uh, uh, legitimacy had pushed. Uh, you know, it was it was pushed to extremes. You know, where things were playing out in now in the regional arena to much to the to the humiliation perhaps of Zanu PF. So now they they are saying, you know, there is an opportunity to exploit and 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 punch back at the CCC. And and the speaker didn't use his position, which uh, which we have to look at because here is a position of the speaker of parliament with such a latitude. Uh, that he could, uh, you know, use it not for the purposes of uh, advancing Zimbabwe, but for the purposes of settling political scores. I mean, he took he took that he took that shot, and um, and now it's causing uh, uh, pandemonium and 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 confusion across the the political divide. Um, 
again it's us reaching those extreme tools of negotiation why can why is it hard for us to be on the table and discuss without having to 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 destroy ourselves in the process of of trying to find one another so i i think what you said is work is welcome if we are genuine about it but i think we must improve in the manner in which we engage with each other so that we don't have to you know uh, always reach out to this and i think we 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 must structure if you look at our parliament the way that it 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 proceeds with this business is well structured the speaker does this if one speaks he's given these minutes and things like that i think also we must structure we must break down what uh, this engagement what what this uh, 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 dialoguing actually should entail break it down if we are genuine about it break it down into all these things so my take in, in this disengagement it was something predictable uh, when if you followed the politics of zimbabwe in the last i don't know since independence you would see that maybe even before independence we've always had to feel like we need to reach these extreme tools of uh, in, uh, of, of, of of inducing dialogue among each other i think we can do better than that as a people i think we need to explore better ways of of doing it um so that we, we, we you know the people's will is not sub, subverted in the process this process subverts people uh, the whole process of voting that we went through the expenses we encountered all those things and only just to do the same thing that we did in the election in the, in the, in, the, in, the, in the general election so basically my point is we cannot be a people that ex- always have to reach these extreme tools to, to induce dialogue uh, thank you very much well, thank you very much, uh, KK, for that contribution this morning. If you're just joining us, uh, this is this morning on Asake, and we are talking about Tupus's engagement from parliament and local authority. What are your thoughts? I know some are, uh, are thinking about what this means uh, for the ordinary Zimbabwean citizens. Some are thinking about what it means for Zimbabwean politics. You know, some are thinking about a whole lot of different things. Over to you, Brighton. Well, thanks so much, Fungai. Uh, thanks so much for that contribution. Uh, and also quite interesting what uh, people are speaking about there, uh, this of disengagement and also from parliament. But not for me, has been the word again. I spoke about this yesterday on the show, the issue of recourse. to so say uh, the recourse also affect our sins of service delivery, right? So I'm asking this this morning, what are the consequences of this uh, disengagement? And also, what is the like outcome to us going to happen um, when Triple C may be um, disengaged from parliament? Uh, will Zanupi have bowed down to the demands made by uh, the Triple C leader yesterday during the press conference? So, I want to hear from you this morning, guys. Please do request the mic. Uh, let's go to some of the comments then uh, not like this morning, what people are saying they, in, t- in terms of the comments. Uh, someone said, let's, let's leave, let the victims uh, blaming begin. And someone said, the problem is we have a raw government that doesn't have, uh, follow the constitution. Uh, Triple C is correct to, to, to disengage until we have fixed the political impasse uh, that is ensured because of an unfair and free election. The best laws of government are being uh, manipulated and used as a tool for silenced opponents. And someone said, Zimbabweans are... Um, let me see this one. Someone says Zimbabweans are very much surprising. Uh, they want a better Zimbabwe by following and uh, religiously obeying the systems that will bring them chaos. Disengagement is the beginning. Yeah, quite interesting comments. Let me go to the last one. Someone says accountability must be as on Zanu PF, uh, which is looting our country. There. Quite interesting comments coming through. Guys, please keep on requesting the mic. We want to hear your thoughts this morning. Let's go to our next speaker there. Uh, Who's the next speaker? Uh, let's give Chimurenga a chance. Good morning, Chimurenga. Chimurenga, are you there? Good morning. Good morning, Brighton and non Morning. Good morning, uh, Brighton. Good morning, non uh, As I always say, it's uh, politics. Politics is for the smart mind. And you don't need to do it with feelings. You might not like somebody. You don't need to fight him today such that you'll fight you tomorrow. Mm, what you're seeing is the bomb that 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 has exploded now but when he, the, this bomb was being built up people didn't want to hear about it people didn't want to talk about it leadership is on it leadership is in control now that the leader uh they mustn't stop fight they must start looking at what went wrong with whatever happened with them choosing um, candidates. What went wrong? Where did we miss it? So, whenever you fight a politician, 
remember that politician will come back to you and you'll be waiting for the right time to strike. This is just what happened. Disengagement from parliament and local authority. It's a strategy that has been used. It's not going to work. Really, it's not going to work. Because already you have lost 15 MPs in parliament, which means there's a by election needed there. And you are disengaging on what? It's going to be a by election. If they wanted not to be part of the government, they shouldn't have made themselves sworn in. They should have said, no, we're not part of it. We're remanding, we do a re-election. Then they've got a standing point. To, to, to me, it's people who doesn't have principles in politics. You need principles in politics. You need to see where do you stand? Where do you draw the line? Where do you say, no, this is not it. One thing's done this way. You, you, you have to do that. If you don't do that in politics, you don't go anyway. You find yourself in these uh, uh, shambolic systems that give you headaches, that even make supporters no longer trust you. Right now, it's a shame. The, vote, the voters voted it wholeheartedly. And when they voted, they, they even voted after people forced to vote for people who they didn't vote for at the first time as candidates. But they had to vote because they wanted that cause. But now, look at it. Because of politics, people fighting on the ground. This is what is happening now. People voted, they've got hope. And I, I don't see many people going to vote again. That's the truth of the, the matter. I don't see many people going to vote because to them now, they don't have the power. There are certain people who have the power to control things. So at the end of the day, the politicians mustn't play with people. They, they, they must act out. And it's very, very good gesture for a political organization to have proper leadership to, so that people know where they take their grievances to. It's very important. People talked about it and people said, no, it's a strategy. But the strategy now is it, getting us back to discuss the same things people were discussing before election. And uh, now people want to blame Zanpia, Faz. No, politics, whenever an opponent sees an opportunity, it's like war. Whenever an opponent sees an opportunity, that's when they strike. So if you, if you don't know that, then you're not politicians. Politicians must know that. The moment you see you urinating behind the jurel as a politician, it's a moment that I strike you as a leader. You're not fit to do that. So it's, it's those small things that matter such that you can achieve the bigger, the bigger deal. Uh, to me, I say disengagement now, it's, it's just like a guru rausidumura makumbo. It's too little, too late. It's because now you've been attacked. You want to go with another camp somewhere in as a disengagement in the other camp. Obviously, the other camp will say no. You see, it's coming. The other camp will say no. Disengagement. Why? We have gone this far. People have, have set up meetings. They've done things. People have already spent money. And you want to disengage. What are we saying? The patriotic view must work here. Politicians must not take us for granted. I thank you, Nonsasa. Well, thanks so much, Chimorenga, for that contribution. Guys, who are just joining us this morning, we we're talking about the triple C disengagement uh, from parliament as well as from local authorities. What are those around that? Remember, yesterday there was a press conference which was addressed by the triple C leader, Advocate Nelson Chamisa. They were speaking about many things uh, the issue of engagement, the issue of uh, dialogue, or the issue of engaging SADAC and other bodies to say, come on board, uh, let's discuss, let's work together and try to solve this mob crisis that I spoke about. Quite interesting there, what Chimorenga is saying, you know, but for me, I was asking myself, to say the question of Zimbabwe that we wrote in 2013 is in and far and wide. Did it come and give us the clause where we defend our own vote in terms of, um, I think, give power? It didn't give the power for us to recall, it gave the power to political parties to recall people that we elected. Remember, men do have the right to vote, right, as enshrined in our constitution, but however. 
uh, someone, an individual can what can recall. Remember, the, day the SG from Zabu said someone can recall the votes of 303,000 people across Zimbabwe. One individual can do that. So does the question of Zimbabwe even give us the power as Zimbabwe to say no to recalls, or it gave only individuals to recall uh, elected officials? Let's go to our next speaker, the Munamatu. Good morning. Good morning, Brighton. Good morning, Nontlasha. Good morning, Asaid. Good morning, Baslali. Good morning, every citizen of Zimbabwe. You know, quoting from the famous Sea Judgment Yard uh, quotation, when injustice becomes law, resistance becomes a duty. It's interesting that I found that quoting is just for an, an interesting quotation. So, yes, we do know the fact, Your Ruti Kona, um, there is mendling, uh, whether we like it or not, there is mendling from Zano PF because of uh, certain aspects that they don't feel that it contributes towards their their goal or their intentions. Now, one of the things that is there, as we know, Ugutikona um, Triple C's intention is to bring change and to bring a different voice uh, against Zanu PF and stuff. And honestly, this, um, in as much as we are seeing this post of Ugutikona, this guy Ushabang who was from. Um, Fars or whatever the story is, whatever the allegations are and whatnot. But you see, for me, when I look at the remaining ones that are there, when they decide to boycott or to literally disengage from the whole parliamentary activities and the local government, it's, it's still the same thing that I used to say, because at the end of the day, we are not being considerate to the electorate, the one that voted and the one that said, okay, go and represent us. Because even if it's one, one individual, we'll stand and say, you know what, watch your, even though the, the laws are gonna go, but if there's what for that one individual, it actually adds to the caucus to say, okay, but there is something that has to be addressed. And yes, in as much as Utikona, the ones that are gonna remain the majority, which is gonna be Zano PF, there are some individuals who also have got certain questions, you know, but unfortunately, because of where they are, they are not allowed to ask these questions. And my questions really um, stands with, as you are saying, Brighton, as an individual, do I have the capacity to recall, let's say, even the president? Because if one individual can recall uh, MPs, what about the president? You know, what about the people in Zanopiev? Can I recall um, MPs from, 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 so I know PF MPs from Parliament. You know, those are the, some of the aspects that also maybe we might need to navigate and look at the possibility and the clauses. But one of the things that which is a very major concern with all these actions um, in the past week is the aspect of Utikona, the, uh, the local investor who are Zimbabweans, either living abroad or living in Zimbabwe, have been given a, a reason not to invest back in Zimbabwe. Because we are seeing Uutikona, even those the ones that we thought that they are going to be standing for truth, are actually being frustrated at the end of the day. And now you think of an investor to say, okay, someone has put in money, you know. And in as much as we're trying to lure in investors, but the first investor that we have to lure in is a local investor that is a Zimbabwean, first of all. If a Zimbabwean cannot uh, invest into their own economy because of this stuff that is happening, then it actually leaves a very big room for every other investor to say, okay, if your locals do not invest in the part, I'm talking about authentic, authentic investors, not people that are coming on corruption tendencies. And honestly, if we as citizens are seeing one of fight corruption, now corruption is fighting back. As it is fighting back, what chance do we have and what navigations do we have and what are the options that are set for us to be able to do so? So in as much as Ugutikona we are looking at all the actions of last week, but the biggest challenge that we're having, speaking to all the Zano PF uh, people there that are out there, because one of the things that I know for sure, and I can say this confidently, most of the Zano PF guys that are living outside Zimbabwe, um, stand corrected, but I, I'm saying this for sure, are not individuals that are investing back into the country. Yes, they are sending money, but investing into, let's say, a political, uh, a, a particular ministerial field or a particular MP, most of these guys are not. And these are the, some of the things that we need to literally look down and address and say, okay, you guys in Zanopia, if your own people and the ones that we are calling investors, we know 
this, the locals, we know whatever they are getting, whatever they have got as their own uh, 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 equity or their, whatever the staff is, their financial equity and stuff, it's not something that they have gained properly. It's something that they have gained corruptly. And these are some of the things that even as we are looking forward and as we are navigating those five years, these are some of the things that when we come to the um, next year, I, I hope this time there's going to be another delimitation report just before we get to the coming elections in 2028. But also there has to be a very deeper conversation that has to be carried. And also I think it's a wake up call for every Zimbabwean to say, okay, we have had political parties that are working on the emotions of people. What about other political parties that are speaking something totally different? And these are some of the things that uh, begin to address election, uh, election period and pre-election. There are some political players that have come in, that have emerged, two of them to be specific. And honestly, now it actually makes sense for someone to literally listen to them needs to have a progressive mind. And unfortunately, the thing that we're doing is that most of us are not progressive in our thinking. We are just regressive and we're looking in the past and trying to move forward. So these are some of the things that we have to look into and really analyze what you're gonna, the new players that are going to come in. What exactly are they saying? And Tina is individual. Are we progressive enough to listen? Because honestly, Namato, I hope CCC lending. came... Yes, lending. CCC came in with a very, very emotional basis. But in terms of strategy, in terms of implementations, in terms of where we are going and articulating where exactly we are, there were a lot of questions to be asked. And right now, as we are seeing, we're seeing some of those cracks coming into play. So as I close, when injustice becomes law, resistance becomes a duty and resistance in all forms and fashions. So I leave it up to you to analyze the next coming five years to see where best can and how best can we progress in terms of our thinking as individuals and really look at the aspects that are given and enshrined to us in the constitution. I thank you. Well, thank you very much, Amnamato, for your contribution. Guys, I still have a lot more requests, so let us be brief so that others can also get a chance to speak. Uh, Pep Ziziola, good morning. Brighton, is that a hand? Yeah, maybe before before I go on, I'm starting a program now shortly. Before I go, maybe the issue of uh, recalls. I also spoke about that in, in, on the other episodes that we spoke about to say, did we even learn from the 2018 recalls, right? Uh, up to now, again, 2023, we're seeing these recalls happening again. Uh, the night disengaging from parliament, from local authorities. Did we learn? What lessons can we learn also from this 2018 and this, what is happening now, the Chabang debacle, the issue of recalls, uh, 15 triple C current MPs and so on. What can also we learn from that as we discuss the issue of disengagement? What are the consequences of disengagement from our parliament, uh, also from local authority? Who will suffer the most? Is it me, the voters? Is it me and do the resident, the taxpayers? Who will suffer the most with the issue of recalls and disengagement? Let's go to another speaker this morning. I see you have been joined by Zanu PF uh, uh, member, Mabuto. Good morning, Mabuto. Mabuto. Yes, uh, good morning, Brighton. Uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity. I've been waiting for quite a while. Um, I think it doesn't come as a surprise if you've been following uh, the CCC politics. For the past two years, a lot of people have been warning Chamisa about running a structureless uh, you know, entity. And he said it is in his own ways that, no, we don't need structures the citizens are the ones who have all the power. The citizens are the ones who make the decisions. And rightfully so, the citizens in the form of Juan Chabang have made the decision. So Chamisa took a grave for himself and he just had to lie in it. And coming to the issue of disengagement, um, no surprise again there, because Chamisa never cared about parliament, he never cared about uh, councils. He said it uh, during the day of nomination in an interview that no... We are going for government. I'm going to be president. Whether I don't get into parliament or council, we don't care because we've been in parliament, we've been in council since the formation of the opposition. So to him, it doesn't really matter. He doesn't care about these MPs. He doesn't care about the time that they invested in their campaigns, the monies that they invested in their campaigns. He doesn't care. It's all about him. And that's how selfish he is as an individual. So I know a lot of people who like to bury their heads in the sand but this was always coming. That's how selfish Chamisa is. He dug his own grave. I'm not going to waste a lot of time. 
that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Well, thank you, Buto, for that contribution. I'm seeing a comment also. A senior says these disengagements, the bickering ETC, is just but a reflection of the worst things that could be happening in the background. Mm-hmm. Factionalism uh, at national level as political leaders fight for individual interests ahead of uh, proposed national GNU consensus. Uh, well, uh, yeah, that's Senora's views, and uh, well, uh, let's hear from other speakers as well. Uh, Pepsi Ziola, good morning. Okay, well, let's move on to another speaker. Lord Master, good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? <coughs> um, well, this is quite interesting. Um, I think uh, Chamisa, for the first time, has lost his touch. And he thinks that the people of Zimbabwe are going to listen to his ignorance. But we are definitely not going to do that this time. Uh, the recalls have been a, a big problem for some of us who were non-partisan when we were voting for our councillors and our members of parliament. So as a result, if I've already instructed my own personal lawyers that if uh, my MP does not attend parliament for three consecutive times, I am suing him and will make sure that he is out of office because he does not save at the pleasure of Triple C, but he saves at the pleasure of the electorate, that, those of us that voted for him. So we'll make sure that he goes out. We are not going to tolerate such nonsense. We did that with the MDC. We will not do it with uh, Triple C. Factionalism in Triple C is not factionalism in national, um, in, in the country and is not even any other problem whatsoever within Zimbabwe. People need to understand that. And this guy who's doing recalls, it's because there is no constitution in Triple C. Uh, he can recall even Chamisa Wacho and have another president. And we all know that Tendai Beach also wants to be president because he saw that Chamisa is failing to lead. So the factionalism in Triple C is equivalent to the factionalism that was in Zanopia when we had two um, locusts in you know, the G- in a, in a G40. One has to win. And, and this is now where the problem is. When those are fighting, especially if you're not in government and ruling party, you cannot make us civilians suffer for your own failures. So Chamisa needs a wake-up call and he's going to get a serious wake-up call. Uh, Zimbabwe is not going to be held hostage by an individual. He's too small for a country that has been uh, here for 40 years. He's very, very he's, he's, and I'm uh, sorry to say this, but he's a young boy and he cannot take us for granted. We've tolerated it enough. He was, even when during elections, he was throwing out votes like he knew everything. He lost the election. He accepted parliament. He when he was not supposed to because he was disregarding the election and now he's recalling stupidity at its worst not just political illiteracy but stupidity so in closing i'll say this it's game over for Nelson chamisa it's game over for any member of parliament who refuses to join parliament simply because they've been told by an assisting individual to stop we will, even anyone who thinks they will do that they will see the wrath of the law. And this is beyond Zanu PF now. This is a war between the citizens themselves and anyone who's been elected to represent the citizens. And even Zanu PF cannot stop the citizens. They will remove any individual. And we're happy with by-elections. We are prepared to, to make sure that the funds are availed by government to ensure that there is by-elections. And we are prepared, even if it means in the next two months. We will. We are no longer tolerating this recourse. Zimbabwe has had enough nonsense uh, for a lifetime. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, uh, Lord Master, for that contribution this morning. Guys, we are running out of time. Uh, let us be brief in our contributions. Hard worker, good morning. Oh, hello. Okay. Good morning, Pepsi, everybody. Pepsi Ziola, I, I've been you the yeah, mic. Uh, I, I, I just go wanted to, to, to react to uh, triple C's strategy to disengage from parliament. I think the greatest question for us, Zimbabwe, I, I mean, if you see our submissions here, are more 
uh, more in the polar. Somebody is submitting from Sun P of point of view, uh, and others from the triple C point of view. But uh, what is the national interest? What is the Zimbabwean agenda? The question is, how did we find ourselves where we are, barely two months after the elections? We have a, a, a should we pretend Zimbabweans that we do not have a, a, a constitutional crisis in Zimbabwe? Why, why should we pretend everything is normal and uh, should we proceed in an abnormal situation? Who um, uh, advocate Mudenda holds a position of strategic uh, importance in a country uh, and decides on a letter from an individual unknown in, in a whole country and you expect the opposition just to play and dance according to what San PF wants. Surely, if we really love our country, uh, I, I see our, our, our discussion is more about the disengagement, but Chamisa did not talk about disengagement only. The strategy has got a part of planning, disengage and pursue dialogue. L let's not leave that out. Don't we need dialogue as a country? We need to dialogue. We are so much uh, so divided and dialogue is needed whether you like it or not we need to dialogue to find each other we cannot proceed as a nation uh, i see some grand standing that you know chamisa is a small boy no chamisa isn't a small boy he's, he's the lead of the uh, biggest opposition in zimbabwe he's got uh, more than two million votes from from zimbabwe so you don't need to deceive yourself to say look he's a small boy is the is uh, the end of chamisa. this is not the end of chamisa this is a political action. This engagement is a, is, is, is a political action. You have said some time ago, Chamisa doesn't do anything, doesn't take action. Yes. Yeah, 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 uh, uh, Paul, that is strategy. He's disengaging his uh, party from, from local government and, uh, uh, and, and, the, and the parliament. So what does this mean? I mean, I mean we, the voter always suffer. Who does the RICO, uh, 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 whose interest does the RICO serve it doesn't serve the, the the interest of the people people voted just a month and the speaker of parliament decided to recall just because you know there is a, a law somewhere that allows him to to do that you know it's it's absurd it is abnormal we need to rec to correct the situation how we need to dialogue it's not disengagement for the sake of disengaging it's disengagement uh, and at the same time pursuing dialogue uh, people of zimbabwe we need to find each other we need to talk to each other and build our country, but we can't do that on the backdrop of uh, uh, unconstitutionality and uh, violation of the law of human rights and some grand standing of you know trying to push a one party state agenda. That's not going to happen in in, in Zimbabwe. Uh, and I, I I salute Shamisa. This is on the beginning, and I I I, I wish uh, the people of Zimbabwe well. Well, thank you, uh, Pep Ziola, for sharing your thoughts uh, on, on, on the topic today. Let's move on to another speaker, APM263. Good morning. Hi, good morning. <clears throat> good morning there. Um, interesting uh, developments, of course. Um, but I just wanted to remind people of what the parliament is. The parliament, um, it has three functions, guys. It's representing the electorate, making laws, and overseeing the government via hearings and inquiries. All right. Um, and those are the three functions of parliament. Um, it's not a place for activism. Um, today, we we actually had a parliament session where um, we had um, MPs questioning ministers about what they're doing about um, the drug the drug use and, um, and how we can uh, overcome that in our country. Now, when uh, we have um, a childish person who says that we're going to disengage from parliament and local authorities, then um, essentially they're doing their whole electorate a disservice. They're not um, acting um, according to what their job is supposed to be. Um, this is not student politics. Activism is left outside on the streets because when you when you're an MP, you have certain powers that you you're supposed to exercise, which is once again representing the electorate, making laws, and overseeing the government via hearings and and inquiries, right? And of those three, I would like to find out what these um, CCC MPs have done so far, in, uh, except for uh, disrupting Parliament, and it's very very unfortunate. And um, the 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 worst part about it is Zanapiyov is now going to take a take a hard stance because nobody is going to be pushed over 
just because some some loser decides to burn down the house because they didn't they didn't win. It's the same thing that has happened, and that's the same kind of thinking that brought sanctions on our country. That's what led opposition parties to go and ask for sanctions for, for, from uh, white supremacist governments. And it's the same thing. They would rather burn down the, the whole place than actually represent the, represent the people. And it's such a it's such a shame. And like Lord um, Lord uh, whatever said earlier, um, CCC issues are not national issues. Zimbabwe is moving forward. Um, we had a GDP growth of uh, up to 60, uh, 6% last year. Um, there are things that are going on. So um, when CCC has their issues, I think they should just not make it a, a national issue because it's their own infighting. It's not us. It's not ZANU-PF. It's not Zimbabwe. It's a cult called CCC that's busy try that's hell bent on making the co the, the country ungovernable. Of which that's not going to work because ZANU-PF is a strong enough party. It's got enough people that 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 can take on anything that CCC decides to put on. So um, this grandstanding is really immature stupidity that uh, we have never seen in politics anywhere in the world. You know, you're elected for parliament. Do your job. You know, um, and it's such a, a sad thing. But then, then again, they they leaving these these things open, and Harare, Blawayo, they're being known to, to to not be functioning properly because of these CCC members or opposition members that have not been taking their their jobs um seriously. They have been known to to always um miss Parliament. Absentism has been always their signature w w ever since it was MDC to CCC. So it's nothing new. But at the end of the day, people are starting to see now that look, if you if you go to other the uh, constituencies where where Zanu PF has won, there are uh, things that are working. Whereas in Araya, we got cholera outbreaks, we got this, and what are they doing? They're busy um, being selfish and not caring about the electorate, which is such a sad sad thing. It's um, very very unfortunate. I'm sorry to say, and um, it's very immature because as an MP, you have powers that you can certainly um, use in Parliament to further your agendas, but then they choose not to. And that's only just going to leave uh, Zano PF to 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 put laws with, without any rebuttals, without any pushbacks, and then once again they'll they'll get back into their comfort zone of being the victim because being the victim is what CCC wants. Look at us cry, help us war, help us Africa, help us, Mister White Man. That's what they do. that's what they know how to do. Otherwise, they don't have any policy. They don't have anything planned to, to for for the elect for the electorate that that puts them in in power, which is very sad. All they know is how to cry and play the victim. <laughs> and I, t I tell you, that's there's nothing that they will ever do except cry and play victim. So we're used to them. But Zanu PF is still going to go. Zimbabwe is still going to move. The economic growth that, that's happening in Zimbabwe is not going to be stopped. Yes, um, uh, there's nothing that, that that's going to be stopped when it comes to the economic development that's that's already going on in Zimbabwe. Um, like I said, we we have had uh, GDP growth that that's that, that, that's hit records. We've had uh, output production that's hit records, and CCC is not going to stop that, unfortunately. And uh, we we're expecting you guys to be crying some more. Uh, we're expecting you guys to be victims uh, to play victim again because we know you have no ideas to to further the country. So um, keep on playing victim CCC. We like it. Attention, uh, Sekai Magad. Okay, thank you. Bye. Well, let's move on to another speaker. Good morning, the native son of Lai Magneto will come to you. Good morning, native son of Lai. Uh, good morning, good morning, um, non Shasha. Um, if, if it was for time, I would have been have not, 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 enough time to actually respond to some of the things being said there, which I would just say totally untrue and totally misleading. Uh, but for the sake of the topic that we will have to speak to, let me just get underway with um, what we are here to discuss today. You know, um, on this issue of disengagement, it's quite, it's quite a, 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 I would say, a great move, but it needs more action behind it. And uh, it needs to have a goal, and that goal has to be reached. And, you know, that goal is finding each other. But I, I, I do not see us uh, actually finding each other after disengaging, you know, because the way I look at it is that when we have to find each other, finding each other is when uh, me, as uh, someone who's affiliated with Triple C, and someone who's affiliated with the Dan PF come together and say, enough is enough. This cannot keep on going. This is not it. I will make you an example of 2017 when um, 
you know, Robert Mkabe was actually ousted by the army. Uh, I would say that was the time when we say, we can say we really found each other. We really went to say uh, it doesn't matter whether you are in politics, whether you're not in politics. None of us really wanted Robert Mkabe to actually carry on as the president. And that is where we found each other. But of course, there was a trick in it, which some of us did not see it coming all the way, although there were calls that, you know, this is a trick, you know. But I would say that is when uh, we found each other in as much as there was a bit of uh, deceiving. There was more of deceiving in terms of the, the motive of removing Robert Mkabe. So in this case, uh, when you look at it, you know, um, as NPF people really tired of what is really going on, because the way you look at it, you know, some people are really enjoying this. This, this, this is actually entertaining for them, especially those also in the diaspora. You know, they are really enjoying seeing our people suffering, seeing the poverty going on. See, because unconstitutionalism it brings a, a, a lot of, you know, um, you know uh, what I would say, uh, you know, challenges in terms of the economy. No one wants to be associated with a country that is not even stable, that does not even have a direction, you know. So in that scenario on its own, you know, it tells you that, you know, we're going to have more people suffering, we're going to have more poverty. And you know, finding each other is when a Zanpia fellow comes to say, hey, man, I do not like to see this going on. When is this going to stop, you know? And because of that, it's going to be really difficult to find each other. It looks like we might keep on, you know, running, uh, you know, in parallel lives. But here's the thing about disengagement again. You know, disengagement does not have to be a triple C thing you know, to say that they are disengaging parliament. We as citizens, uh, we need to also uh, start our own disengagement with this government because we cannot say uh, to disengage. Why is we are uh, engaging with this government? We need to start disengaging this government. Boycott if that means to be. I know some people might say it is not practical, it is not feasible to do it, but we need to start talking about disengagement nationally in all levels. You know, uh, because at the end of the day, you understand one thing. In as much as uh, there's illegitimate equation, the, the Nagako government exists because we, we are there, you know. But when we start disengaging with this government, we will start asking Nagako, who are you governing? Because, well, we're not going to be, uh, you know, engaging with you. You know, we talk of whatever, uh, you know, I, I'll put it in the words of Utandegile uh, when he posted earlier, that whenever we're going to have. Uh, it's sort of like a, 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 an address by a president or whatsoever. Disengage it, by coaches, you know. We need to start uh, our own protest that is more of action-like, you know. I protest, of course, is not always rioting. Yes, not always rioting on the streets and being violent, you know. We need to make this disengagement our own protest, and we need to make understand that it's going to be in the long run. And over the end, this government will start you know, feeling the pinch when the, the, the citizens nationally start to disengage it in all platforms. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much, Native Son of Lai. Over to you, Magneto. <clears throat> oh, thank you very much. I'm not going to take much of your time. Um, I think the problem we have, people, is as Zimbabweans, if our politics will, will change if we get to a point whereby when something is done or something is said, we look at what has been said and we must not look at who said it. Anyway, coming to this, these recalls and all that stuff, the, something which is bothering me is, last night, less than 24 hours ago, this Chawango guy was supposed to be having an interview at one of Zimbabwe's radio stations, but he didn't turn up. Instead, he did send his spokesperson. I repeat this. He did send his spokesperson. His spokesperson who stood in for him is Kalipani Pungen. Kalipani Pungen was MDCT senator up until 23 August 2023. Where in the world have you seen a person from another party having a spokesperson from a different party? Chawangu is saying he's triple C, but he's a spokesperson who, who, who stood up for him in that interview for more than one and a half hours is an, an MDC person, which is Kalipani, who was a senator under Monzora up until August this year. Make it make sense to me. To be honest, the Zimbabweans, we have to be a people who use their brains. Listening to some comments here, for me, I don't know. I will leave it there, but make it make sense. 
because this guy just didn't wake up and became a spokesperson. It means they've been planning together for a long time, Chawangu and Pungen. But this Pungen was MDC senator, MDCT senator under Munzora in the last parliament. So it doesn't make sense to me. Thank you. Well, thank you, Magneto. Uh, not Golita, please wrap up the show for us. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Nonsansla. Thank you, Brighton. Uh, thank you, everyone else in the space. Well, we still continue with the drama in Zimbabwe. You know, guys, I said, I've said a lot, I think, but um, our Zimbabwe is not the Zimbabwe we want. If we are not following our own constitution, if you are breaking the law left, right, and center with impunity, I don't think we will build anything. The most important thing that we need to do is, you, you always, you, we always need, have to do things, doing things with a purpose. If we are saying we are holding election as a, as, a, as a nation, what is it that we want to achieve? And when the results come out, how do we move forward with that? But if we try and practice kindergarten politics, which don't make sense, and then we expect that we'll move forward as a country, guys, I think we are joking. The hunger will continue. That's number one. There is a lot that is happening in the world such that we need to be concentrating on developing our country, looking at the challenges that are affecting everyone, that are affecting each and every nation, instead of focusing on destroying an individual. Because you don't know how powerful that individual is, and by so doing, you, you, know, you destroy everything that you have. We currently have got health challenges, we've got hunger, We've got instability everywhere. How are we going to feed our people? How are we going to build our infrastructure? How are we going to prepare for the future, the future generation? Are we even considering them as a people? I think we need to be sober-minded as Zimbabweans and look at things squarely. All these countries that we see that have developed, that where our young people are running away to, to develop, their economies, to develop their countries. They found each other. They came together, and they built those countries. And they seek the expertise from outside their countries so that they can develop going forward. But we are still going backwards. The government is happy for the remittances that are sent back home. But that is not doing what we need to do. We are not... God. We are not building. So, what CCC has done, I think it's a, it's, it speaks louder. It's louder than any other voice. When they didn't go to parliament, we saw what happened during the summer. And uh, what they have done now, it actually creates a big vacuum that will be hard to fill if the law is to be followed. And I think the government has to look at it, and Ozan PF has to look at it, and try and solve it with a sober mind. And the other thing is, we can't just have each and every platform to come and push propaganda. We need to look at the thing squarely with that sober mind, as a people, as Zimbabwe. The issue is, Whatever is happening in Zimbabwe, all these people who are coming in on platforms, they live in Western countries. They have everything, everything, you name it. They've got electricity, infrastructure, internet, uh, everything, good health care. Their kids are going to good schools, education, and, and they're even going to universities. Why is it those in Zimbabwe are the ones that suffer? They are not getting any service delivered. Even those in the rural area, the song is just there. So please, people, if you call yourself as a Zimbabwe, someone who is patriotic, let's be sober. Let's come together. 
let's build Zimbabwe because no one will. I'll end there. Thank you, guys. Well, thank you so much, uh, Not Golide, and for everyone for listening in, for sh uh, sharing your views and thoughts. I know uh, there were so many requests. Well, okay, Senor, you can you can go ahead. Uh, please be brief uh, so that we wrap up the show. Senor, are you there? Okay, well, uh, as I was saying, we've come to the end of the show. Uh, we started off early because, you know, there are other engagements that we have to go to. Um, but just, uh, you know, for those who are here in Blawayo, our site will be at Sanganai or Sanganani World Tourism Expo. Uh, the date are today until the 14th of October at the Zeta ETF ground. So uh, if you are there, please uh, do look out uh, for us uh, so that, you know, we get to interact and, you know, uh, maybe you might uh, actually uh, get something out of uh, our engagement as well. So, yeah, we close off the show. Uh, let me just give Signora another chance. Signora, you can go ahead. Signora, you can unmute your mic and share your views. Okay. Well, uh, it looks like uh, Senor, maybe he can't hear us, but yeah, we've come to the end of the show. Thank you so much, guys. Remember to follow Site ZW on all our social media platforms uh, for more of our programs, for updates, and for the news. Otherwise, from myself, Nonshansha Mapigwa and Brighton Nube, it's bye for now. <laughs>